Ladies and gentlemen, today we have a massive end-to-end -end mega park with what appears to be over a dozen roller coasters. We're going to be going coaster after coaster, non-stop action in today's episode of Park Spotlight. So it's going to be a big one. Get your popcorn, buckle up, keep your arms in at all times, and join me on today's theme park adventure. Hey yo, my Planet Coaster friends, Johnny5 Alive here, and welcome back to another episode of Park Spotlight. Today we're going to be featuring Ever Park, created by Y2K Noop, and here they say. Welcome to Ever Park. Join us on celebrating 50 years. There's a big party with even bigger news. What could it be? This is a challenge park that I've been working on and will continue to do. Is the park as it sits after 50 years. Some minor realism where I could fit it a couple themed areas i really do believe this is my best planko build yet i hope you enjoy okay so very interesting based off their description here it sounds to me like they were playing challenge or like they're, they're playing i guess scenario mode where you have a blank slate and then you build a park and you use the park's economy and what you make from the guests coming in and generating revenue and you continue to add rides. Basically playing the game as intended to be played. They're actually not just building stuff and building it, they're, they're building it as they go. And it appears that this is the 50 year mark within the in-game terms. So I think this is really interesting because I don't think we've ever done this before where we've actually featured someone's park that was played playing the game. We think of playing the game in the sense of you're building sandbox mode and you're getting as creative as you can possibly do without any monetization or money limitate limitations uh, or constraints put on you. It's actually a really cool kind of take on Park Spotlight here today and I'm excited to take a closer look. So let's get into it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here we are at the Ever Park Park entrance. Low budget park entrance, but hey, when you're first starting off, you don't have any cash, so you got to throw it all together. Um, I think that this is what what's happening here is uh, this is year 50 of their park. Uh, yep, here we go, March 21st, year 50 in the bottom right hand corner. So in fact, they built as they went. The first thing they decided to place down was a carousel, and they did uh, actually put the garden work in, and they, they did some you know foliage and, and theming. Um, love to see it. So we got a big coaster back there. Probably one of their first big money-making revenue features. Um, this is really interesting. I like it. I, I, I would actually... It gives me ideas or something that we could maybe do for a challenge series ourselves or maybe even a, a contest on the, on the show. Uh, I would love to see people play scenario mode, you know, in the campaign. The game's campaign... You open up one of the scenarios and you build it start to finish and beyond the actual finish line and you finish it up with a bow tie and say like, hey, I played this scenario. Here is a min maxed version of the best park you could possibly make on X scenario. And I would love to do a, a, a spotlight for one of each of the 15 or 20 scenarios that exist in the game and see what people can come up with based on being limited with the resources that are coming in and uh, the constraints put on you. But can you still achieve like a super detailed mega park or super realistic park? Um, it'd be interesting to see. So I actually, I really am fascinated by this concept and I want to know your guys' thoughts down in the uh, comments below. Is that something you would like to see is uh, like, of before and after of the scenarios. We open it up, this is what it looks like, and then this is what the creator has done with it. Um, and that's what we're kind of looking at here today, but done with, I guess, like free play mode where the map is just flat and you have no money and you have to just go. So that's what they call like this challenge mode. So we have our first ride here is the Jammer. Um, it, and and to, to my point is they, they managed to get like a lot of theming in here and a lot of path work and a lot of decorations. Uh, they didn't slouch on anything by any means. While it's not like the next MKP park in terms of insane amounts of theming, um, it does have that like sprawling massiveness and craziness of a Six Flags park. So here we go, we got the Jammer. It looks like it's a wooden coaster here. There's a look at all the ride results. We're gonna get on this one going up the lift right now.
All right, pretty awesome and sprawling wooden coaster. Kicking things off with a bang. Definitely promising if uh, all the coasters are well designed like that is. Uh, and there's almost a dozen of them, if not more. I, I, I tried to count them myself. There's not a lot of information about this park on the Steam page. Um, but as you can see, everywhere we look in the background, we're seeing the peaks of coasters popping out of the horizon. So, yeah, there's basically coasters everywhere. And we're, every time we walk 10, 15 feet we're gonna come across another coaster to ride. So this is just gonna be a jam-packed episode. And again, like they haven't slouched on anything. Like the, the plaza areas have nice like lighting, benches, garbage bins, seating areas, restaurants. Uh, it's it's all just jam-packed as you would expect from a traditional mega, mega park. We even have really cool signs for the flat rides. Um, and to think that they did this all with the, like the, as they were playing the game, earning revenue and building as you go, playing the game, as a simulation the way it was intended to be played is actually something we don't do in Planet Coaster oddly enough when in fact this is a simulation game and it was intended to be played this way just so happens that everyone just says hey I want unlimited money and I want to go into sandbox and see what I can do um, so I, I don't know there's something really compelling about this to me and uh, I love it so we got the 50 year celebrations everywhere throughout the park too um, it's pretty cool I, I, I think this is a really cool concept. I think I'm just backtracking here, so I want to see if we can find our way to what appears to be a boomerang or a corkscrew of some sort. Let's see if we can get to this coaster here. Uh, the guests, the guests are everywhere. In fact, holy moly! I was like, the frame rate's not the best on this park, which is understandable, but we have a, a, a guest limit of seven thousand. Oh my god! I'm gonna I'm gonna change it to two. That explains a lot of things. I'm going to change it to 2,000, and the guests will start leaving. Uh, one of the biggest performance hits in this game is the amount of, like, the, the pathing and the simulation that these guests have to endure. They all have, like, priorities, things that they want to do, and themselves, the models are pretty high detail. So once you have, I think, two to 3,000, the game starts to bog down. Uh, and we have 7,000 in this park. <laughs> so yeah, that's definitely going to uh, do a performance check. With that said, um, this park's actually going to run extremely well. What I'm probably going to do here is after we ride this coaster, I'm going to hold the fast forward button for just a little bit. And we're going to cut back to uh, the, the regular park spotlight with less guests in the park. And that should hopefully improve the experience overall. Uh, opening up this park, I didn't even realize or think to check how many guests are in the park because we're so used to seeing no guests in the park because uh, people are doing these crazy mega parks that can't handle anymore. So here we go with the gunslinger. There's a 1500 meter track length on this one. Wow, absolute doozy. Let's uh, check this out. It's a, it's a corkscrew coaster.
<laughs> the design on this coaster is freaking hilarious. Uh, I like the transfer tracks, a little bit of realism here. So it's the lift is going up so high that it's treating it as if it's like a giga coaster. It's definitely not intended to go that high. And then it, we're riding around as if we are riding a giga coaster. Then suddenly you just put us into a block section, slam on all the brakes, and then go into kind of a traditional corkscrew from there. <laughs> it's like a giga hybrid uh corkscrew amalgamation quite crazy i kind of like it though <laughs> it's cool all right i'm gonna speed up the game a little bit and do a little bit of a jump cut uh once we have less guests in the park okay here we are if anyone's wondering that took me just about 20 minutes of waiting to get all those guests out of the park but hello frame rate it uh definitely made a massive improvement on the frames and there's still tons and tons of guests everywhere in the park so for those of you who are making these epic parks uh, and submitting them to the show uh, please you know reduce your or cap your guest limit to 2000 before submitting your creation and if you're playing like challenge mode like this creator is here what we could do is make a separate save reduce all the guests down to 2000 and then submit that or upload it and submit that and then go back to your old save that has five, 6,000 guests. If, if that's what you like to do, if you like to play with five, 6,000 guests in your park, um, you know, that by all means do that. I, I, if uh, I were to make a recommendation to anyone playing this game, uh, always put a cap at about 2,000. I know that, you know, if you have five, six, 7,000 in your park and you're playing challenge mode, obviously the more guests is going to increase the amount of revenue you make. But, um, you know, overall, if you're going to submit something to the show, I would definitely appreciate not having to wait 20 minutes to kick out all your guests. And uh, I definitely see the results of things running a lot smoother here. So we have a, a looping a shuttle corkscrew style coaster here. There's a look at all the stats if you'd like to see them. And let's get right to it. Boom, there it is. Definitely more of a traditional corkscrew coaster as compared to the uh, Giga corkscrew that we saw back there. Um, awesome, awesome. Ooh, it looks like we have an inverted coaster. I definitely want to go check out that next. Looking good. Inverted corkscrew. And a massive wooden coaster. Ooh, nice little signage you got here. The Condor. All right, let's go fly like a Condor. Oh. There's one passing above us right there. That's really cool. Oh my god, quite the queue here. We're just gonna jump over this fence here, and here we go. <laughs> Skip line. There it is. Here we are at the Condor. There's a look at all the ride results if you'd like to see them. Six inversions on this.
right, really nice that one, other than getting smacked in the face from a couple trees there, but pretty good overall. Timbers, I like how you uh, did all the signs for each of the flat rides too. Cyclone here, um, you know, t going out of your way to either download fonts or create them yourselves. Uh, to dress up all of the flat rides throughout the park um, while you're playing your challenge mode. You know, it's it's definitely, uh, you're not slouching by any means. You got stuff under construction. Now, unfortunately for this uh, creator, Y2K Snoop, you did say you were going to continue playing this park past, you know, keep going, because that's why you have stuff that's under construction and things like that coming soon. Unfortunately for you, we're not going to be featuring it again. This is, uh, you know, someone else is going to get the spotlight. And if you did end up finishing this park, we would have wanted to rather see the finished version, but you went ahead and submitted this. So it feels to me like you're ready to showcase it. And there's a ton of content here, really. Um, we're riding a dozen coasters. And I think if you went any further, just for your own funsies, uh, there's nothing, there's no harm, no foul there. But the park is already end to end to end to end. You're going to start putting more peace count in. You're going to have more guests in. And uh, things are just going to get out of control. And then that's where you come across the computer melters. There's a little look at this little driving ride here. A little bit of Alice in Wonderland vibes. That's pretty cool. Really cute. But yeah, even with all the guests out of the park, it's still got a crazy low frame rate at times. So um, if you're going to keep building this, yeah, you're going to melt your own computer in the process. So all I could say is I wish you the best of luck finishing it. Um, but from what we're seeing here, uh, there's lots to look at, lots of rides to go on. And I think it's uh, an adequate amount of content uh, and deserving of a park spotlight here today. But uh, yeah, there it is. We are at the wooden coaster, the Hawk Moth. Uh, there's a look at all the stats if you'd like to see them. Let's give this a go. Wow, what a crazy wooden coaster. Tons of track packed into that. My goodness gracious, look at that. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> you named your flat ride the swarm. There's a swarm of bees spinning around over there, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's actually kind of cute. All right, let's, uh, let's venture deeper and see what other crazy coasters we can find. A little food court here. My God, what a big park. This is just absolutely incredible. A stunt man. Okay. Look at this. What have you done over here? The stunt man coaster. Big cues on these. Definitely gonna need big cues when you have 7,000 guests in your park. And here we go. We're going in between a bunch of crates and stuff. There's a look at all the stats if you want to see them. I'm gonna jump on this one here.
Wow, quite the crazy ride. Actually quite impressed how you uh, wove it in between all of those crate crates. And by the way, these are awful looking. Whoever made those at TMTK, uh, yeah, these are horrendous. <laughs> you had a couple crashing cars and some animatronics in there, add a little bit more fun factor to the ride. No, I quite like that. That was fun. Skydiver drop tower. There it goes right there. Got a little bit of Western vibes going on over here with the Barnstormer. Oh yeah, let's go check this out from this perspective. Hey, I like what you did here with the basic shape uh, pathway. That's quite nice. Little TMTK uh, animals here for the barnyard. Give a little fly around the park here. Look at some of the coasters in the background. You know, I'm looking around the park and I can't even figure out with that 20 minute break I had to take for fast forwarding, getting all the guests to the park, I've already forgotten which coasters we've been on and which ones we haven't been on. And there's so many in this park that it's gonna be a. Uh... I'm gonna have to double check the ride list, make sure we didn't forget any. Did we go on this corkscrew here? I feel like maybe we did. The Boulder Rush, that feels familiar. Yeah. And then, yeah, yeah, okay. We, we went down this way, went, hit those two up. Um, there's a gigantic Giga Coaster back there. This was that Giga Corkscrew thing. So if we go around this way, we should arrive at what appears to be a, a crazy Giga... Now, you can see how slow the coasters are <laughs> crawling up the lips. One thing I would uh, recommend to the creator is you can actually select your chain, your chain lifts and increase the speed of them. I haven't actually had to tell anyone to do that since like six years ago. <laughs> um, people just have learned to do that over time. Negative G, this has a really cool color scheme going on here. I like this, but uh, yeah, definitely speed up your chain lifts. I think from here on out, whatever coasters we're gonna go on, I'm gonna fast forward the lifts. I know a long, long time ago, I used to do that and people would yell at me. Uh, I don't care. You could yell at me all you want in the comments. We're speeding them up there. They literally take like three minutes to get to the top. And uh, I don't want to waste my time. I don't want to waste your time. <laughs> Let's just get to it riding the coaster. So here we go. The negative G. It's green across the board. Here's a look at the stats. Eight airtime counts. Ten seconds of airtime on this bad boy. Um, we got one at, at midway of the lift. We could probably jump on that one. Look at this crawl. This incredibly slow crawl. <laughs> Wait for it. <laughs> all right. All right. Let's go. Wow, freaking way! There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Let's uh, let's jump over to the Pirate Cove. A lot more theming in this area than some of the others, definitely. Um, playing around with those, <laughs> like, playing around with those um, pirate theme kits. Interesting uh, choice there for the coaster for Peg Leg. Not very uh, pirate themed fitting uh, coaster, and a very interesting color palette as well. This crazy neon. T the, the neon teal and yellow it, it's very very bold and vibrant but let's uh let's take a look at this peg leg you can go track view on this one check it out Short and sweet. 
there it is. Cool little pirate villa here, like this. Nice aesthetic, great uh, theming, lots of undulation, very decorative. Oh, really good job on this over here. Mutiny. We got another coaster in here, dark ride maybe. What's going on here? The ceiling feels very low. Ooh. Mine train coaster. This this feels like it's uh, a little bit more aesthetically fitting of a coaster choice to your theme here. Like it. And it's... <laughs> you swapped out the train for a corkscrew train. <laughs> that is mutiny. <laughs> There's a look at the stats there if you want to see them. Let's go. So we definitely won't be swinging on this mine train. <laughs> what a shame. <laughs> So we'll just do track view in that case. Yeah, the aesthetics and uh, decorations of the theming in the surrounding area of this coaster are really top-notch compared to some of the other areas in the park. And I, it almost feels like when you got to the pirate area of the park, you probably were swimming in cash from you played your, your scenario mode. And you just went really ham with the decorations or having a ton of fun with the, the pirate theme itself. And you just kind of went all out. And, you know, it, it shows that you're, you're capable of doing really heavily themed areas. I think if you were playing sandbox mode, you would deliver uh, a really compact, dense thematic areas for each of the um, sections of your park. Um, the fact that it has as much theming and decorations as it has uh, for a challenge mode like simulation uh, definitely goes to show that, you know, you, you definitely have patience and you, you have that level of detail there. It's all really impressive stuff so far. I mean, so far we've seen, I think, probably majority of the coasters, if not all of them. Let's go to, up to a bird's eye view and take a look around at this mega park. So we started off with the wooden coaster. We worked our way around here and we went on the, the Giga Corkscrew there. Uh, we head down here. We went on this coaster here and this one over there. Head through here, did the wooden coaster there. This one's under construction, so that doesn't really count. We checked out, we took a look at that. We did the Stuntman there, the little uh, short and sweet coaster there, the Giga and then this mine train coaster. I think we actually hit all of the coasters from what uh, from the looks of things. Maybe not a dozen coasters. I miss maybe miscalculated or maybe had included a flat ride and then a couple coasters that were under construction there. But as you guys could see here, this is an end to end to end mega park. Like this fills up the whole thing, the whole skybox or uh, buildable area but it has ble breathing room tons of trees tons of back end of the park um so you know it's it's not like fully end to end in terms of like polish it goes to show how much you can build while just playing the game you know playing it like a simulation how much you can get in there um and i definitely appreciate the amount of detail that you actually put into this not being a, a sandbox creator uh it's actually a fair amount of detail at this point though i wouldn't really go much further like you know i would probably just see what you can do with either sandbox mode or uh, a different scenario this is a very very flat map so you know i'd like to see in the future a little bit more elevation a little bit more interesting landscapes and even shrink things down a little bit like your coaster designs are pretty good your your boarding stations your boarding signs your queues like you've incorporated realism and it's just like from there where do you go from there it's just to add a little bit more theming uh separate those thematic areas a little bit more have you know more of these like pirate areas that we saw back here uh, maybe do like a sci-fi and an adventure area and, and try to you know section off your park into themed areas a little bit more and just push that theming uh because it is a mega park but it's not the most decorative or th thematic mega park that i've seen but it's definitely has art everywhere that we went there's not really a bunch of empty areas like yeah this is off to the side here there's some emptiness here but everything in between uh doesn't really feel empty you know on um, from the foot level everywhere we went we felt pretty immersed we felt like we were in a theme park and we felt that there was a lot of detail and artistry so i think you uh, are really a good builder 
and from here it's just like push yourself see what you could do maybe in a sandbox setting and uh maybe trying to do see what you could do with infinite money or you know being able to play around with terrain a little bit more i love to see that but you know your coaster basics your your theming your art your path work cues uh, realism you got a, you, you got a little bit of everything in there and you're doing it at a definitely an advanced plus quality overall so definitely a really good mega park uh, overall what did you guys think that's pretty much going to wrap up the episode there so i'd love to hear your comments down below lots of coasters in this one lots of craziness um my <laughs> My personal favorite is going to be this crazy Giga Corkscrew because it just made me laugh. What was your favorite coaster and why? And uh, there it is. That's going to do it for today's episode of Park Spotlight, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you have an awesome day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.